Here's the idea, here's what we've been doing wrong in our culture. We've been playing what I call the weight loss game, right? So when you guys think about, you go see any physician, any nutritionist, any personal trainer, and you tell them, I want body change, right? I want to change the way my body looks. What are they going to tell you? Two things they're going to tell you. Eat less, right? Exercise more. That's essentially it. That's it. It's a simple mathematics equation, right? The, the, and, and it's true, if you eat less and you exercise more, you will lose weight. Except, the problem is, will you lose fat? Weight loss does not equal fat loss. And that's the problem. You can be burning calories, right? You can be losing weight, but that weight and those calories may or may not be fat. So let me show you what that is. This is these are two individuals here. If they come to my clinic, and I see a BMI, body mass index of 33.9, which these people both have, their, their height to weight ratio. Let's say I didn't see them. They're sitting downstairs in my clinic. And I see that number. What am I going to think? I'm going to be like, this person is morbidly obese. Right? That's what I'm going to think to myself. Then I'm going to go down and, and look at them. I mean, are these two people morbidly obese? Very different, right? So that tells me something. If I put this person on a weight loss diet, Right? I tell them, eat less and exercise more. What's going to happen to this person? They're going to get smaller. Right? That's an apple shape. He's going to become a smaller apple shape on a weight loss diet. So he's going to get smaller, but he's going to stay that apple shape. If I put him on a fat loss diet, he is going to become him. That's the difference. Right? That's the difference. And this, there's no yo-yo and rebound with this. It's much less. With this, it is. Because I don't care. This person, let's say, let's, let's take the biggest loser, right? They don't necessarily care always what kind of weight they're losing. They're taking diuretics. They're doing all kinds of things. Let me get them as much weight off as I can. You can lose water. You can lose fat. You can lose muscle, right? So this is the distinction that everyone's missing. So how do you turn weight loss into fat loss? So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Which has more calories? Of these two foods, which one has more calories? You know, so some people say the chicken breast, other people would assume the donut. Well, in reality, they have the same amount of calories, right? They have the same amount of calories, 250 calories. Now here's the thing, if I eat less of this, right? Who, how many of you guys heard of the Twinkie diet here recently in the news, right? You heard that, right? So everyone was confused. They were asking me, how can you eat nothing but Twinkies and lose a bunch of weight? <clears throat> well, easy. If you don't eat a lot of them, you're going to lose weight. Did you lose fat? That's a different, that's a different uh, question. You may have lose, lost fat, but how much muscle did you lose as well? If I eat less of this chicken breast, I'm going to lose weight. But here's the difference. They're the same amount of calories, but what do they do to hunger cravings and energy. If I wake up and I have scrambled egg whites and vegetables and a little bit of oatmeal and a piece of fruit versus a coffee and a donut, am I going to be more or less likely to crave sweets and more coffee at 10 a.m.? Am I going to be more or less likely to want a quesadilla or a burger at lunch? This is how you determine fat loss. Look at the difference. This is the difference between these two foods. 20 grams of fat, 18 grams of carb, 2 grams of protein. Versus the chicken, 11 grams, 2 grams of carbohydrate, 37 grams of protein. What signal is that going to send to your body? Which one is going to keep you full for longer? Which one is going to block cravings? Which one is going to give you more sustained energy between those two? And here's the thing that we need to understand. The first distinction, if you're taking notes on this, that you want to write down is weight loss does not equal fat loss. And we've got to stop playing the weight loss game if you want, want real body change. And then the second thing is this. And this always just gets everybody like, oh my God, what are you saying? Does a healthy diet equal a fat loss diet? If I'm eating healthy, right, healthy foods, does that mean I'm going to lose fat? No, it doesn't. And that's another problem. Right? Because there's a lot of healthy things out there. Nuts and seeds, dairy foods, whole grains, sweet fruits, cereals, things like that. Those things are all healthy. They might lower my cholesterol a little bit. They might change my body a little bit. But they aren't necessarily going to change me from a weight loss person into a fat loss person. And that's why people struggle. Because they don't understand that difference. 
So let me give you a real world example. I'm going to give you a very healthy American breakfast, right? This breakfast here, Kashi Goline Crunch cereal, very healthy cereal, right? Higher in protein, higher in fiber, large glass of orange juice, okay? Some whole grain toast on the side. Healthy breakfast, right? Would anyone argue that's healthy? Then, you know, your doctor would probably say, get more whole grains, have some, you know, fruit juice. Versus, by the way, think about how big, if you do one serving size of Kashi Goline Crunch, what's that look like? Half, half a cup, right? So let's. So what's the standard bowl poured by Americans? Does anyone know of cereal? It's four cups. Now two to four cups. That's the standard size. It's four. So think about think about one serving, or let's let's be nice. Let's, let's give two servings of kashi goji crunch. Versus this, an eight egg white omelet, eight egg whites, a cup of spinach, a cup of mushroom, right? A cup of tomato. On the side, a cup of blueberries. Large glass of green tea, maybe even throw a couple pieces of Canadian bacon in there. Which of those two meals has more food? No contest, right? That eight egg white omelet. Which has more calories? If, if you go to calorieking.com and you calculate these two meals, you will find that that bowl of cereal, that orange juice, and that one piece of toast has more calories than that eight with egg white omelet with three cups of vegetables, a cup of blueberries, and a side of Canadian bacon. The Canadian bacon throws people off a little bit, right, because they think bacon, but that's actually a very lean source of protein. But doesn't that tell you something's going on, right? Something is very strange here that this is what we do. Now, again, would you even be able to finish this meal? I'm a big guy, I probably wouldn't be able to finish it, right? Maybe. I could go through a whole bowl of Kashi Goldene Crunch. Going back to the, the donuts and the chicken breast, I can eat five donuts. I cannot eat five chicken breasts. I don't know many people who could, right? That's the difference here. This is healthy. This is fat loss. Fat loss food, right? Well, let's put it this way. A healthy diet does not necessarily equal a fat loss diet. But a fat loss diet always equals a healthy diet if there's fat to lose. That is the number one way to improve your health in our country, is to lose weight, but more importantly, lose fat, body composition. Here's what we do, and here's what I want to try to convince you guys when you guys go away from here tonight. This is the standard practice in our country right now. There's that one or two servings of cereal, right? So I'm going on a diet, and I'm going to change my body. So I wake up in the morning, I have my two servings of cereal, and I have that, and I go off to work, and I avoid food all day, because I know i got to eat less and exercise more. So then I get to lunch, and I'm like, okay, going to have my salad, right, little salad there. Don't want too much, though, because I, I want to watch my calories. Then I go all the way through the day. I get home at 4 o'clock, and what do I do? I've got, I just went to the grocery store yesterday, and I bought chicken breast and spinach and all that kind of stuff. Am I going to eat that? I can have all the chicken breast, all the spinach, all the salad makings I want in my kitchen. And what I'm going to be doing is open up the cupboards looking for Oreos. I'm going to be driving by five guys. I'm going to be, Pizza Hut's going to be calling me. I know I got that haagen in there, that little bit left. That's the first thing I'm going to. And we all laugh, right, because we know this, and this is normal. There's nothing wrong with this. This is what the normal human body does. You don't feed it. You don't give it the right things. It's going to crave and what it's going to crave primarily is sugar, fat, and salt. Here is what happens. You get home after forcing yourself not to eat, and this is what you eat. This is what you want. doesn't matter. All, you can have all the healthy fat loss foods you want, and this is what you're going after. Pizza, candy, anything you got. I know for me, I'm just like you guys. So I do that, and I will find myself making a trip down to five guys. Doesn't matter what I have, it doesn't matter what healthy foods I have, right? So we've all been there. This is what I call a continuous meal. Because it's basically, don't eat a big breakfast, starve myself all day, don't eat a big lunch, and then eat continuously from 4 o'clock all the way to 11 o'clock, go to bed, stuff, lie on my back, snore all night, wake up, feel disgusted with myself, and repeat it. Right? right? I wake up and I say, you know, I just disgusted with myself, I'm not eating any more food today. 
You know, and then by the time I get to four o'clock, it starts all over again. 